Hey everybody, I'm Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, we're going to talk about what is a PBX, or Private Branch Exchange. So PBXs go back a long way. These existed long before, well, even before IT and computers, or at least before people were really using them in any amount. So a private branch exchange, even long ago, before there was computers, stood for the server that handled your voice traffic, literally for your telephones. It allowed companies, especially large ones, to run their own telephone exchange so that people could dial in and then they could control extensions and internal dialing and things like that. Without a PBX, companies were stuck having a separate line, literally a piece of copper running from endpoints inside people's actual handsets on their desks out to the phone company and they'd have to bring it bring in a huge bundle of these and everyone would have to be connected directly to one and if you wanted to call from desk to desk you'd have to call out to the phone company and back in on another line and it was complicated and weird and expensive so they came up with this private branch exchange which basically allowed you to have your own branch office of the phone company inside your own company and use that instead of theirs for your internal calling and then when you called out you would share what were called trunk lines that would go out to the actual phone company, you know, AT&T or Verizon or whoever, and make your public calls. PBXs were a great idea. Moving into the VOIP era since almost 20 years ago, today we use uh, voice over IP. Our voice traffic is part of our IT infrastructure instead of being a legacy dedicated voice infrastructure. But the concept of the PBX has not changed too much. It is a little bit different simply because we're no longer using all those legacy lines and having to do mechanical switching or whatever. Today, voice traffic is just another service on our network and voice protocols are no different really than email or web or any other protocol on our network. They're slightly different because we need them to be faster in real time and things like that, but the basics haven't actually changed. They're still using packets the same way. They still traverse the network in the same way. They're the same thing. Let's be realistic. People like to think that they're special. They're not. Very few things in IT are. There's general cases. They're just normal web traffic. Or, I'm sorry, normal internet traffic. They're not web traffic. The PBX, therefore, has simply become our voice server. In the same way that Apache or IIS might be your web server, an Exchange or Zimbra might be your email server, your PBX, whatever brand you decide to use, these come from a lot of different vendors and some are free, some are expensive, but your PBX is just your voice server and the telephone sitting on your desk or the soft phone on your computer or the client on your cell phone, all of those are just endpoint applications for voice that attach to that server so you're in a normal client server mode. You could think of the phone on your desk or your soft phone being much like a web browser that connects to the web server. It just doesn't connect to lots of web servers, but your phone on your desk could connect to multiple PBXs. I have a low-end one on my desk here. It'll connect to three PBXs at the same time. There are higher-end ones that might connect to a dozen or more, and my soft phone on my computer can connect to reasonably an unlimited number. And so that's in many ways like a web browser. I just pick which one I want to talk to at a time and make a call, and it'll listen for calls from all of them all at once. In a normal business, you're only dealing with one PBX. You don't want people connecting to lots of PBXs. That would be weird because a normal company, you just have your one PBX. But if you're a home user and you need to connect to multiple businesses, for example, because if you're like me and you do a lot of phone support and sometimes you need to know exactly what's going on on a customer's phone system, it can be very handy. But a PBX is really just your phone or voice server. Think of it in that context. It is the server that you use for your voice traffic, just like you would with Exchange and Outlook for your email. It's a perfect example because if you're sending emails internally on Outlook and Exchange, your Outlook still has to talk to Exchange. It doesn't send directly to other people's Outlooks. It goes through the central server and the central server then sends it out to another Outlook client. But if you were to email someone on the outside, it needs to go over the SMTP protocol. It needs to go out and hit DNS and find out where that other person's server is, where their Exchange or their email server are, and it's going to send that over the public internet to them, and then they're going to receive it and use it internally in the same way. If you were dealing with private branch exchanges, PBXs for voice traffic and never going to the public uh, switch telephone network, the PSTN, that's exactly how it would work. Your client, your desktop phone, which is like Outlook, connects to your PBX, which is like Exchange, and it makes a voice call into that. That system then says, oh, is this internal? And simply forwards your call on to another phone within your organization. It never leaves your PBX. Should you want to make a call to the internet, it can go out and use uh, 
uh, addresses that look almost exactly like email addresses, use DNS to look up where their server is for that traffic, connect to their PBX, and make that call purely over the internet. Almost no one does that, even though they kind of should. It's a really cool technology. But that's there and works essentially identical to email except for voice traffic. But now we have the one extra step that we generally, 99.999% of the time, want our outside calls not to go over the internet to directly to another PBX, but we want them to go to the PSTN, the public switch telephone network, the same one that AT&T has had for 100 years, and call over that using traditional phone numbers. Your PBX knows when it gets a phone number instead of an email address. I mean, that's not hard to figure out, right? It sees that number on the public switch telephone network and knows that it needs to talk over a trunk line to the PSTN, just like PBXs have done forever, right? The only difference is that with a modern VOIP system, it can use the same classic trunks that you used 20, 30, 40 years ago, or it can use VOIP all the way back to the carrier, and therefore it's getting its trunk over a modern VOIP protocol like SIP or EECS, but the same basic things are applying. It knows that the phone number needs to go to that carrier. It sends the call out to the carrier who has the connection to the PSTN, and they put it directly onto the public switch telephone network, which routes through the S7 protocol and looks up phone numbers, but it uses phone numbers just like addresses. It's just a separate network. It's just not part of the internet. That's all. So that's what your PBX is. It is your company's or your personal own telephone server and your handsets and such are simply the clients for that. That's all a PBX is. And by understanding that, it gives us a lot of power to picture how our voice traffic works, how our system will be set up, how networking works uh, with VOIP, and it helps to explain why it's not magic, it's not special, it's just more of the same things we deal with with email and web and other protocols. They all work basically the same. We're gonna delve a little bit more into the complexities of uh, VOIP protocols. Of course, in the future, there are some things that are different that are worth understanding, but they're not special. They're just uniquely applied in a certain pattern for VOIP. That's all. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. And as always, you can sponsor us on Patreon and ask questions in the thread below. This episode of Sam IT has been sponsored by our friends at Talkadillo, the affordable, simple, fully managed, predictably priced VOIP PBX platform. Learn more at Talkadillo.com and help to support Sam IT.